Hi, and welcome to the Diablo podcast. Your home for Diablo diehards, Diablo tryhards, casual and hardcore alike. I am your host, Xanth, and today we're going back old school. We're bringing the right crew back. Uh, I got my lovely co-host and noted podcast disdainer, Nineball. Oh, hi. And the man, the myth, the legend, Nerdbirds. Hello. Uh, and we are, of course, brought to you by PureDiablo.com, your home for an ever-growing Diablo community and expansive wiki, this podcast. And uh, I want to hark to the wiki real quick. Uh, every podcast I start out with the same little spiel, and we talk about ever-growing. Uh, Ellie which a name we don't bring up here enough has just been expanding on the site, talking about uh, the upcoming expansion with vessel of hatred. And that in turn is expanding into our ever growing wiki, where you can find all the information about vessel of hatred that is out there. Um, but uh, shout out to Ellie. Uh, if you've ever played Diablo two, and I think most of us have, you've had the opportunity to be joined by Ellie <laughs> as a, uh rogue mercenary um if you haven't hired ellie i always hire ellie uh, but that is her her claim to fame from back in the day that uh you've been partying with her for probably 20 years uh and she in turn is keeping the the lights on keeping the podcast going and keeping the site running uh as we are now officially uh, diablo partners so brought up last podcast but we're a Diablo partner podcast. Uh, I don't know if we, I didn't read all the fine print. I don't know if I just have to say it a bunch, but uh, Diablo partner. Okay. So this isn't a braggy podcast. That's not our goal. Uh, the goal is to kind of put a, put a bow on this season where we're sitting at right now for you, Leviathan, it's January 9th. Um, season ends on the 23rd. I know our time frame. Uh, we are probably going to get some news about what the new season looks like soon. And then we're probably going to talk about that season the next time we we hang out. We're going to chat and dig into all the nitty gritty. And we're not going to really get a chance to wrap everything up. And it's always fun to do a little bit of speculation because I know Nine Ball's got some good stuff there to kind of dig into. But before we do that, let's cover a little bit of news. The biggest news slash non-news is we have a new Diablo 3 season coming. And I say that because it did kind of get a little overshadowed, uh, or it is getting overshadowed. We kind of had a hasty closure and then, hey, we're ready, here it goes. What I think we're starting to see is that Diablo 3 is going to be put on the back burner, which I don't think is too surprising. But for those very hardcore Diablo 3 loyalists, I think that might be hard. Uh, thoughts on the new Diablo 3 season? Plans for your uh, adventure back into D3? Uh, or just general thoughts about uh, maybe having to retire from Diablo 3? Well, I'm not retiring yet. I'm actually really excited about season 30. Uh, they're bringing in like basically three different season themes uh, mm -hmm. with the visions of enmity, the the soul shards. Um, I mean, there's just a lot to to chew on there. And they did some significant like nerfs to the altar of rights, which is going to make it a little more balanced. But with the other themes added in, it's probably going to still be bonkers. Um, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. It'll be at least a fun weekend for sure. Um, I don't see myself playing it for like you know the next three months. But I'm going to jump in and play it. I'm definitely going to go with the, the season launch on Friday, for sure. Uh, Wizard, as always, because uh, it's like all I play in that game. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. I've got some friends that are going to play, too. And it's kind of being overshadowed, like you said. But it also makes sense. Like, the game's in, in uh, what is it, maintenance mode or whatever it is now. So, like, it's this is the last, you know, they did some class changes and stuff, which I'm excited about. They buffed the worst wizard set and then also buffed the best wizard set. So we were still not going to use it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be rocking Tal Rasha Meteors most likely for another season in Diablo 3, and I'm excited about it. 
Uh, I'm just happy that we're getting some uh, pestilence buffs for like the first time in a decade. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That that is uh, one of my favorite sets to, to go through and play. The uh, Soul Shard season was uh, amazingly fun. Like you mentioned already, uh, the uh, the altar coming back and a uh, the it's it's permanent form because now the, with this season the altar is just a permanent part of the game. Um, as are the fissures from uh, season twenty nine, so the, they'll be they'll be back permanent uh, feature uh, as well. Uh, I, I definitely I was taken back, you know, because normally we get like a two week announcement uh, before the end of the season, uh, which you know just uh, happened a couple days ago, and we only got like a couple of days uh, on the announcement because like most of the social media team. Uh, was still on vacation at the time, and so it was just kind of like coordination between development and publishing and all other types of stuff as to the uh, the mixed messages going through and or the delayed messaging going through coming out on it. Um, yeah, it, it, it'll be a nice, uh, nice good uh, hurrah uh, for the, uh, the the game with a bunch of these like um, balance changes. I do hope that you know, even though we're not gonna. We know that we're not going to see any new themes uh, come out as they go through and they continue to rotate the seasons. Like they'll always be the altar. They'll always be fissures as they, they pick up the past seasonal themes to bring back. Uh, but I do hope that they continue to do some like balance changes, um, you know, here and there. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything major. Just maybe change things up like a little bit. Cause you know, the, you know, just like it was like you were mentioning, like it's fun for a weekend, you know, like a week or two at the, uh, the seasonal start is still always fun. Maybe if uh, a little bit, um, uh, you know, delayed from the Diablo 4 season, you know, as opposed to like just like a week or two, like maybe, you know, like uh, a, a month or so. I understand like it's the holidays that caused all the uh, the timing issues, you know, people taking vacations and such. But uh, yeah, no, I'll definitely go through, hop on, give it a try this weekend. It'll be fun. I think for me, I, I kind of like the wedging that's happening. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree it could have been uh, communicated a little bit better. But this weekend is probably like one of the perfect weekends for me because once we hear what the new season is, I lose more interest in Diablo 4. It's a nice little, you know, palate cleanser to to dive into. It sakes your thirst for just that little bit, and then you can go back to Diablo 4 with the the new and shiny thing. Um, and yeah, I do. I, I agree with you, Nineball. I, I would like to see, you know, obviously some numerical changes and, and some fixes along the way as Diablo 3 keeps going. Um, what I, I hope we don't get to, and, and we kind of saw it with Diablo 2's most recent um, ladder reset, was it was just, hey, we're, we're just resetting the ladder. Um, yeah. Or with you know Diablo three, we're not we're not gonna change any numbers. We're just gonna here's the season, you know season uh, twenty seven theme. Uh, here we go again. Um, it still makes it just feel like a little. It gives it a little bit more life of like, hey, we tossed in just this one new thing. Go play with it. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I will admit, I'm still way more hyped for Diablo four. I think that's logical, right? It's that makes it's sense. The, it's the oh. new, new shiny thing. Um, so that's what I'm chopping up the bit to get into is is to talk Diablo Four with you guys. Um, I put it in a rundown really late, but I I need to I need to talk about this now. Um, I need to complain about this. So I've had a lot of time on my hands to play Diablo Four. Uh, I've been playing. All the classes, guys. Uh, I hit that 100 on Howdy. Druid. Thank you. Uh, and I just said, you know what? I should play some other things. I should play some other classes. I played a Necromancer. Loved it. I want to see stronger minions. That's a conversation for a different day. Uh, loved it. And then it died. Um, and I made another one. Loved it. And then it died. Um, and this this becomes the Monty Python bit, and I'm I'm gonna move on from it. I'm glad that, I'm glad someone else was thinking, and then that one burned I'm, down. And then <laughs> but this down. one, yeah. um, but then I played a sorcerer. Uh, holy crap, guys! These things are are pretty sweet. Uh, I felt like I was keenly aware of how slow Druid actually is, 
as I was zipping through things. Um, and I've played Rogue before, but I, I did dive into that. I took them all um, to Hardcore 50 and above. I want to complain about class quests. I want to claim, I want to complain specifically about druid class quests. Necromancer. I get my Book of the Dead almost immediately. I do one piddly little dungeon. Boom, there's your golem. Play around with it. You're fine. Sorcerer. Uh, sorcerer. W w what the crap is this? I did one quest. And then like at level 25, like, hey, would you want a second one of those? Uh, yes, sir. Do I have to do anything? Like, I don't know. Clear a stronghold? Nope. You just get it. You just get it right away. Here it is for you. Rogue. Hey, you want to go do a quest? Sure. Do I need to do anything? No, nah, here you go. You're good. Um, Barbarian. No, here, you, you just go fight this, uh, just go fight this big old, uh, Barbarian's a little bit more involved, but you could go fight this big tusked creature. Okay, cool. Uh, is everything good? We're, we're completely unlocked here? Oh, great. Okay, so Druid, here's what we're going to need you to do. You need to go clear this entire stronghold. Then you need to go on a quest. Then you need to collect 100, 200, 300, 400 of these spirit emblems. Then you need to come back here, turn them into the right right actual animal. Oh, hey, are you over in Kiovashan and you want to change your, your preferred spirit animal? No, you got to come all the way back here and do it. Guys, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. Every other class... Class quest and it's is the least great. interesting too. It's yeah. the most involved and least interesting. Yes. Just make me do. If I had to clear the stronghold, that's fine, right? That's totally fine. But I don't want to have to every time I make a new druid, and thankfully my druid didn't die this this season. I just don't want to do it. I don't. For every necromancer I killed so far, I never once thought, "Oh God, I got to do the class quest again." Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you remember when you did the sorcerer class quest? Did you complete the dungeon? No. Because yeah, you don't have to. I was like, gonna make sure you can just run in, grab it, and leave. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. No, like I, I, I found the objective. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm that's gonna get it. out of here. Down portal. See ya. Yeah. I'm gonna go talk to that guy, and then I never have to talk to somebody else again about utilizing a core feature of my class. Yeah. Pretty great. Why are Why are more people talking about this? We, I think we did early in like the preseason. I think it's been overshadowed by everything else going on, but I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure we had a pretty lengthy discussion because you you had talked about how you were disappointed in the class feature for the druid oh, to begin with. I'm I'm still disappointed in the class feature, <laughs> but you know what? I'm not going to change that, right? Like I'm not that guy. I don't have that skill. Why? Please don't make us do that. Every other class gets it so easy, like. If if you had to go and clear a stronghold to start your class quest every single time, and then had to go through ten more hoops, it just oh also and let's also uh, uh, I got more I got more okay. Not only do I have to collect four hundred some spirit emblems or whatever they're called, I have to pick them up manually. They don't yeah. just like auto. Like I, I have to go around. <laughs> doing more clicking than what i need to and they drop forever too like yeah. forever those things just keep dropping they, even if you don't is, ever need them ever again yeah it's the worst yeah and i feel like anybody listening if i'm wrong please you know sound off in the comments let me know but i think i'm i i very infrequently feel this right about something that the druid class mechanic and quest is the worst out of all of them. Uh, they I don't even need, think it's a conversation. It's absolutely correct. <laughs> they <laughs> like, all right? they all need to be on the same level of the necromancer and sorcerer. Yeah. Do one quest, and later on, as you level, you'll unlock the other part. Like that's perfect. I saw someone had recommended that they just give the sorcerer class ability to everyone. Like as as there as like a just a thing that exists, and then redo the class ability for the sorcerer specifically, um, which I thought was interesting. Like everyone gets that, and they still have their class quest, and then the sorcerer gets something new. 
I, I mean, if you it. like, like enchanting like your different spells, I mean, it makes sense, right? Every character has a reason why you could do that. Like, if you're a rogue that's playing Twisted Blades, so enchant Twisting Blades, and it does something extra to Twisting Blades. I mean, it could work for sure, but it's, uh, uh, that kind of is uh, that would begin to be like kind of like a, a last epoch system where you have like the skill yeah. tree and the skill that you can modify this one individual skill in the way that you want it to. Yep. So every which time I by, cast which... a tornado, there's. Uh, wolves that shoot out of it. <laughs> Tornado wolves. I'm I'm just glad that this that this game, that the Diablo Wolf Four Nado. it was the druid that got the tornado, not the sorcerer. Um, because the tornado is always ass. Um, even if it's good, it's still kind of ass. And uh, yeah, yeah. I hated I hated having it in Diablo Three, so I'm glad that you got it back in Diablo Four. Because Diablo I... Two had. It was the Druid again, right? Yeah, Druid, druid and yeah. And druid too. Diablo yeah, 2. Wind Druid was fun in D2. They can't, uh, they can't decide who controls return. the wind in this game. <laughs> that's that's true. Um, all right, so that's my that's my rant. Um, I know I went on order, but it, it was burning me up. Uh, I, I, I've been, I do I've been have one it. thing to add. All right, um, please, tack on. So if if we're going to go through and complain about like the class quests um, for the necromancer one, can the skeletons respawn without having to kill everything in the first wave? Thank you. That's all. <laughs> That'd be good too. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. But yeah, I'm it's, not, yeah. it's so painful. It's so painful doing you know uh, one you know like one bounty you know one one uh, one of uh, the uh, the tree of whispers. A deed to kill like thirty zombies and then a cellar. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a. a all right, it, you know it's tit for tat. It's fine. Uh, they can all be better. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. But it was it was really glaring as I was making that journey through all of the characters, right? Because I I had to go through that process, and I didn't. Like I said, I did not dread the having to do the Book of the Dead. I did not dread uh, the sorcerers, um, whatever uh, I had to talk to her with her. I see. I can't even remember it because, like, that's how painless it was, right? It was so seamless. Uh, the barbarian one, totally fine. Like, um, even even the barbarian probably has like one more step than it than it actually needs. But you know. Do not like, do not recommend. Um, okay, so let's jump into what I think was a, a really fun event. I really liked it. I'm curious how successful you guys were at it. Uh, Midwinter Blight. So Mid Midwinter Blight did end uh, on the second. Uh, I would have loved a few more days, but I, di I did manage to get everything. Um, I was really impressed with myself. That was part of why I was going into every class. I used Midwinter Blight to just level characters because it was like two for one. Like, I'm playing a new right. character and I'm earning, granted, not at world tier four levels, but I'm earning stuff to buy stuff and get some fun cosmetics along the way. So what, were your, what was your experience with Midwinter Blight? Uh, I mean, it was fine. Um, I don't think that they've perfected the the seasonal events yet i hope that there's a little more to the other ones i'll be honest i didn't get a single thing out of it um i mean I, I i started to and then i realized i started doing some math and i was just like wait a minute i gotta find like 300 of these things to get these things to then get this thing and this thing is a transmog that i'm never going to use because it kind of looks meh anyway um so yeah i just i i didn't really i i've spent more time in avatar than doing midwinter blight um, I don't think it was bad by any means. It's just something tacked onto the game that was fun. You could go do it, and that's fine. And my girlfriend, she's been playing it like crazy. Like, she still plays every day, and she still goes and just kills the midwinter stuff. I just didn't see the incentive. The incentive was not there for me, and I didn't start a new character. I'd already had three level 100s this season, so I just kind of was, like, jumping in and playing. Um, it, but it wasn't bad, but my honest criticism was it didn't feel as impactful as I would have liked. Like, it, like when you jump into WoW and there's a seasonal event happening... Like, it's very easy to jump in and get some stuff done without you know, a huge time commitment. But, like, grinding some of that stuff out, especially if you want to grind all of it out, was a significant time commitment to grind it out. And all you're doing is killing just open-world stuff. Um, so, yeah, it was fine. It was fine, I would say. 
Yeah, I want to say I um, I like unlocked just like I think the shield and one of the uh, the back transmogs for the necromancer. I I want to say that the like what Nerdword was saying, the amount of time that it took for doing kind of like the open world farming before you unlocked the ability to then get the uh, the caches from you know uh, nightmare dungeons or the abattoir was like a little bit like. It was it was higher than it should have been. Like maybe if yeah. it was like half that, and it then, would have been. Yeah, yep. yeah. Like if like if you unlocked the ability to get the caches from the nightmare dungeons at like level two instead of level three, and then you could use that to unlock level three, it probably would have been uh, a little bit more incentivized, at least for me to go through and do it. Because it was like I I unlocked the level three, and then I was able to do it and uh, you know get it from the the caches, and then just run in a little bit more of the abattoir and just like dabbling in the uh, the nightmare dungeons i could afford like one other transmog um and yeah no it, i mean it was fine it's uh, you know it was about on par what you'd expect from like a the you know the world of warcraft event and such so it's just a uh, nice little cool uh I, I guess it continues to be that i just wish like the transmogs were like a little bit i don't know more engaging uh to uh to want to like really put the uh the effort in um you know but past that you know it's uh you know it can only get better from there yeah yeah there were certain transmogs that i saved till the very end where i'm just like well it's just a different looking sword it's not super fancy yeah. i'll i guess and... i'll i'll take it and the the weapons are like especially like on the the necromancer the weapons are some of like the hardest transmogs to see or even notice while you're going through and playing the game like especially like a dagger or a sword it's like i don't even see it the majority of the time right i would say my biggest criticism of the event is that if you purchased a transmog for a class you weren't playing so if i bought the back attachment for sorcerer as a druid, I couldn't then unlock it. I needed to put it into my stash and then create a sorcerer or go to a sorcerer that I had to then unlock it. Like I was not capable of doing that. And that seemed like a weird oversight. Like just because I'm not playing this class doesn't mean it shouldn't unlock for all the classes. Like I should just be able to click it. Um, right. That it. I, I would hope that in future seasons they they change that because while I was on that journey of like, oh, I'm just going to play everything because I've, I've got nothing else going on. Um, not everybody does. And then if you did buy it, like, it may not seem logical that, that you would do that. Uh, or I guess the other part too, there was no indicator when you would go in that you had already purchased a transmog. So I needed to be yeah. extra on top of things. To, to not, you know, um, make buy the same thing along the way. Yeah, yeah. and I kind of, I, I want to say I almost did that as well because it's just like, oh, a back transmog for the necromancer. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you want to avoid. Like you don't, you don't want to do that. You don't want to spend an hour grinding and then, hey, I bought the same thing. Ah, oh, nuts. There's no, there's no refund. There's no nothing like that. So, um. But overall, just, just as a note, if I cut out in the middle of the podcast, just keep going because that that thunderstorm is moving in. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised so, you can't hear it on the mic. Uh, it, 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 there's some irony here in that both uh, Nerd Words and myself are dealing with a winter storm, and you have uh, your own storm going on. But uh, the podcast does keep going let's let's see what happens um i'm somewhat uh it's our own nostalgic. midwinter blight outside right yeah, <laughs> yeah. it uh it kind of reminds me of you know playing uh d2 on dial up internet back in the day could cut out at any moment who knows what's gonna yep. happen just hope that you're don't answer the phone there. mom you'll kick me don't off don't answer the phone uh but yeah, hopefully, hopefully we make it through. Um, yeah, I, I, I did it really like I loved being able to combine midwinter with with leveling characters. It, yeah. it just felt cool to be like, okay, my character is progressing, and I'm picking up a few um, 
piece of cosmetics that that I don't have. Uh, my son uh, was playing with me, and he does not get a battle pass, right? Because he plays intermittently. And it was his first cosmetic, right? You know, he's on the free tier for the for the battle pass. He's picked up the the really trash ones. Um, but he was able to get the a back RP. attachment. Right, exactly. The, the, the RP trans box. Yeah, he was able to get a back attachment, right? And that's that's kind of cool. That was something he's like, oh, that's awesome. I don't have the ability. To, like, I have not got that in any other way. So, hey, uh, more of those things is, is nice. And uh, I'm not going to turn down another event. Um, a Valentine's Day one seems weird. I don't know what they would do. Uh, but Easter zombies hearts. would be good. Like actual hearts, yeah. Yeah. Like anatomical <laughs> hearts, yeah. Uh, yeah, I could see that too. Um, I'm okay with whatever, but let's let's uh, let's keep that kind of going. I wouldn't mind having a permanent thing that you could do like this in there of like a rotating cosmetics that you can earn through this kind of feature. I I wouldn't hate it is all I'm saying. But maybe that's a me thing. Okay. So this is one, as we kind of transition here into closing out, this is one that I still have not dabbled in. I have not touched the, the Avatar at all yet. Um, I got, as I said before, I got really sucked into playing different classes and I was really kind of committed to the Necromancer for a little bit of like, you know what, I think I could take this. Um, and then I died. And then uh, the next two deaths were in World Tier 4 as I was making the transition. You know, when you're like level 55 and just, or no, I was like level 50. Um, you're just like a little too cocky. You're like, oh, I can handle it. And you cannot. <laughs> but I'm also like, you know, the season's going to end. I got to go quick. I got to go quick. Um, so that was go fast. Right. That's what was pushing me out of Avatar. And my druid is just sitting there. And I just don't know where to go with him right now. But so I haven't I haven't touched Avatar at all. Um, but I've watched a lot of content around it. We have seen that the upper echelon of Avatar has been cleared. We've seen that the glyph has been leveled uh, to its highest capacity. So what was thought to be impossible, or at least was going to take a lot longer than the confines of six weeks, has actually been broken. Um, which to me is a little surprising, but it's also, it, it harks back to everything with Diablo that we've seen over the years. The the second you say it's not doable, it is very doable. <laughs> there, there's um, someone that plays 16 hours a day that's going to do it. Yep. And good on them for doing it. Um, so what's what what is the abateer abateer abattoir uh, of zero like gentlemen and what am I missing out on? Uh, so I capped out at level four. Um, I wasn't able to do I wasn't able to do a level five. Uh, every time that I went through and tried, I got uh, like a sorceress um, spawn, and they would just teleport to me and one shot me. It didn't matter what defenses or anything like that that I had up. Um, at that point, there was just no surviving. I could probably try and just like keep going and fishing until I can like coax a, uh, uh, you know, a, um, a conduit pylon or something like that. But uh, that I didn't fish in Diablo three, you know, for that type of stuff. So it wasn't it wasn't like an appealing way to play for me in Diablo four. But I still had fun going through and like doing like level ones and level twos, uh, getting like a ton of glyph XP um you know uh for just like maxing out like the regular glyphs being able to have a little bit more freedom and changing out the specs um that that uh was uh actually like one of my favorite aspects of it despite how like just how powerful uh you know uh zero's glyph was just the fact that even like doing level one is like a thousand xp so that way you could just do like a couple and any glyph will just be from you know zero to 21 and you know it's super fast uh was uh was nice and definitely was like hmm maybe they should buff cliff xp in regular nightmare dungeons a little bit more um so that way it doesn't feel as much of a chore um you know that that was uh that was that was fun i enjoyed it for what it was but it's like just this this uh you know it's it's the holidays 
it's a uh, you know family work is like super busy uh and there's just a whole bunch of other things i'm trying to get done towards the end of the year and such uh, i just couldn't devote as much time as i wanted to to it but i had fun with what i did yeah i um i so i hit rank 10 on it um i haven't tried 11 i haven't tried it i planned i think i could get to 15 but it's going to be a slog, like you said, right? Like a little bit of fishing and really trying to figure it out. Like my gear is pretty well optimized. I don't have my glyph leveled up super high. I think it's like level like eight or nine or something like that. Like it's gaining XP. I, I did a lot of the lower level ones. Um, I, ironically, I had a lot more success when me and my buddy who plays a Hoda Barb did it together. <laughs> that was a lot more fun. <laughs> Uh, but it also, like, you know, obviously one person dies, you're penalized for that, but we play well together, we play a lot of games together, so it worked pretty well. Um, no, beat Halo yeah, 2 so, on Legendary together. Yeah, that's it, <laughs> exactly. So, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, so I think I could get to 15, I don't see me getting to 20 or 25, like, I don't see that happening, and I, and I don't really care to push it that hard, because it's a temporary thing, like, it's not staying permanently, it might come back in some other facet or, you know, whatever, but... Um, I think it was fun. It was cool to to mess around with. I didn't spend as much time in it as I thought as I thought I would, but I did enjoy it. Um, it just it highlights some of the things that are wrong with the game a bit more. Because um, you know, once you just like with Greater Rifts and Diablo three, when you have infinite scaling content, or well, infinite scaling content, um, high level scaling content, the the focus of what can do it is incredibly narrow. Um, which obviously limits the amount of builds that are successful and viable. Um, and even like like the for the sorcerer, like, you know, reading like the build guides and stuff and going through some of the stuff that North War and some of the other content creators were creating is like, okay, so you want to have like these pieces that have shrine buff duration. You want to put those on and then hit a shrine and then swap your other gear pieces out. And then when you do the boss fight, you want to swap this out and re-enchant this thing and do this thing. And it's just like, dude, like... I just want to play the game, you know, like I, yeah. all of that seems like give me an armory to click a button and okay. But like, I don't want to have to do that much work. Um, it, it wasn't worth the payoff for me to do all of that, but I had fun with it. Um, I mean, corpse bows really one shot you in abattoir for sure. <laughs> like big time. Those things hurt. Um, I, I think that if they tuned the damage down a little bit more, but kept the health as high as it was, it would still be very dangerous and hard to achieve, but it wouldn't have as much bullshit one shotting. Um, no one loves getting one shot for something that no. you just could not react to. That's not fun in any game. I don't care what it is. Yeah, yeah. like my biggest issue was it because even when I was going through and doing like the level fives, the mobs were never an issue at like level yeah. five. For, like my Apex. build and what I had, it was no, it was just the blood seekers. Oh, it was, it was literally it was just the blood seekers. That's the only thing. Like if I didn't have like a a conduit or an invulnerability shrine you know, or manage to, like, pull, like, just, like, one away and not have it be, like, a, a sorceress, because whatever it was that whenever whenever I had a sorceress as a bloodseeker, they would teleport on top of me and I would just die. It was over. Yeah, yeah that that was it, you know, um, that if, you know, it, it just, I don't know, the, they they were tuned so much higher than what the, the previous part of the, uh, the, the avatar was, that I would just walk through the whole wrestling content and then get one shot by a blood seeker. And so it was just like there 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 was something going on there with like the damage scaling or whatever that was not didn't didn't feel very rewarding. Right. Well, I think that like for me, I had pro I mean, I had problems with the blood seekers as well too, but it was more so the affixes, like the especially fire enchanted and poison enchanted. Like fire enchanted the like the waves that blast out in like a pattern and then like mm -hmm. rotate to you every time you rotate to dodge them. Um, just one shot. If I don't have a barrier up or I don't have flame shield to be literally completely invulnerable, I'm going to get one shot through every barrier I have. Um, the poison enchanted, like I'm lucky as a Sork because every time you pop a cooldown, like if you ride the right build, you get a small barrier and that barrier just stops poison damage. Like you just stop taking ticking poison damage. But like my barb friend, like he has that poison thing. He's going to spam all 12 of his potions before, you know, and he's still going to die because it's just insane how much that damage like just drains your health. Um, so again, I think there's some affix tuning that could help it. I think there's some some little things there too. But you know, I'm I'm more excited to see what they're gonna do with the leaderboards in season three and how mm -hmm. this might have impacted that. You know what I mean? Like, um, I don't think this was like the end all be all of what they're planning to do. I think this is a oh, temporary. No. Hey, let's just throw this in and see what's what. Um, and of course, Rob beat it. Um, and others. I think I know Rob did. So I know Rob did. But yeah. um, and I know did any other class besides Hodobar beat it? Because as far as I'm aware, it was just Hodobar, right? 
Poison Shred. Oh, that beat it as well. Okay, gotcha. I, I should look in to see if other classes beat it too. Um, but I, I know that Hoda was the first one to do it. Um, uh, not, I watched, not too surprising. I also watched videos of, of Rob carrying people through Avatar of Zir. Um, some pretty unmentionable people, <laughs> which is a whole other conversation. But um, but yeah, so it's just... I, I thought it was a, an interesting system. I had a little more fun with it, or I had a little bit of fun with it, but um, I'm more excited to see how it impacts Season 3 and the leaderboards moving forward. I'm more excited about that. And that's why I didn't invest the time. It's going to wipe away. It's going to disappear. I have the feat of strength for hitting level 10. If I can get the one for 15, that'd be awesome. Um, I'll have that on there forever, which is really cool. But I'm more excited to see what the leaderboards look like in Season 3. I think you bring up an interesting transition. You know, Before we go into like our hopes for what Season 3 will bring... Uh... Um... Oh. Sorry, I just went through to go through and look up, you know, um, one of like the the leaderboards. It seems the uh, necromancer was the only class that hasn't yet performed a a level twenty five. Oh, really? Yeah, there are like three ball lightning sorcerers, four ball lightning sorcerers, five uh, druid it's actually with the same tread. one. Yeah. That's the same person. Makuna. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's the same person four times. Oh no, there's another one. There's two. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yep. Uh, and then there's uh, one rogue. Yeah. W- one rogue that managed to go through and do it. Uh, so this is this is solo. Uh, okay. Because there is a necromancer that's done it in a party. Um, but as far as like solo clears, yeah, there's a sorcerer, barbarian, tons of barbarians, a couple sorcerers, like what's, one druid what, and one rogue. What's the highest for necro? Out of curiosity. Uh, let's see. A lot of barbs, holy shit. Yeah. Twenty one is currently yeah. the highest record for a solo necro. That's a few higher than what I was kind of expecting. Um interesting. So as we're looking to kind of transition into season three, we'll go into our hopes and our speculation. Uh one thing that we know is Avatar is not a guaranteed comeback. You know, we were told it's six weeks. Um is the game lacking without having it in season three? No, no, especially if they, uh, like if they buff, um, like glyph XP again for nightmare dungeons, I would say, I would say no, not at all. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, you know, a thousand XP for clearing like, uh, you know, uh, level 100. Uh, nightmare dungeon you know it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be quite the the insanity at that level um but yeah like if they, 500 if they do... would be nice though yeah no 500 would be great <laughs> like know? the two or 300 is killing me yeah i'm with yeah. you yeah crap so again i i've been pretty content without dabbling in it um in tandem with that though one of the big draws of this season outside of the the blood powers was the introduction of farmable uniques right we got yeah varshan we got the beast and ice we got gregor and um we got duriel that was all fresh and new there he is co-host duriel beg um shout out we missed him last time um so that was all fresh and new in this season, right? We know we'll get a new season mechanic and we'll speculate on on that, but how excited are you to do the organ, the uh, egg, the shard grind again in season three? I don't mind it. Um... I don't. I didn't. I, I'm. I'm excited for it. I think it'll be fine. I mean, keep in mind too. I haven't done Durial runs in a while because I, I got yeah. a lot of the gear that I need. I haven't run Durial in probably a month or more. Um, I still have mats left over. I should probably run before the season's over just because, right? Well, but it, um, it, it was buffed, so get after it. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, 
I don't mind it, but Diablo's always been that. Diablo, that is Diablo. That is the grind, right? Like, you you know, to grind out, I mean, to grind a torch in Diablo 2 took some time, right? You had to put some mm-hmm. specific effort into some specific characters to be able to do it easily. Um, no, to, as, a counter, as a counterpoint to a torch, though, you knew you were getting a torch, right? Sure. Well, you know you're getting 925 items, and you know you're getting a unique. Right. Is it but... the one you want? No, but you can run it infinitely, so... Um, and I would argue that the, the Ubers in Diablo 4 are so much easier than the Uber bosses in Diablo 2, even. I, um, I will I will grind out a hundred Duriel mats, you know, before but, I want to grind out, like, <laughs> three Countesses on Hell. Yeah, I, I still like that, because I'm crazy, but I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you, for sure. But yeah, I think that is Diablo, right? Like, di- that is the grind for Diablo. It's also not required. You can play the entire game without ever doing those bosses and still find those pieces. You know, uh, it, obviously less chance. The target farming is is helpful, and I think it was really cool. I, I was shocked at how much it impacted my gameplay and my team's gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm excited to see how that expands and see what they do with that moving forward. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see. There's no deterrent for me. I'm gonna grind the hell out of Durio when the season launches for sure. I think it's also just because it's like a different experience at the beginning of the season, because while you're still, you're not yet 100, you know, but you're still capable of going through and doing it and going through, finding those pieces, getting those, getting that gear, regardless of what um, your first couple of, you know, uniques are going to be, they're going to be nice and upgrades and could maybe steer you. You hadn't, you hadn't yet like fully decided on, you're only like level 70, 75. And you're like, I'm not sure which way I'm going to go. And then, oh, you know, you know, this dropped, so I'll go with that build, you know, just yep. to go through, try it out or something along uh, along those lines. Because um, definitely is like one, once you've hit 100 and you're just you're trying to find something to do, it will be it will be a filler at that point. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's just like, well, while you're still in the leveling, pro- leveling process, it, it's a bit like fresher, you know? Yeah. That is fair, and it is a, a a conversation that I've seen happening around about like the freshness of it, and then the barrier of of the mats. You know, Diablo two, you could run Pindle all day. Uh, Varshan, you're gonna have to do some whispers. Um, you know, uh, Gregor, you're gonna have to do some hell tides. Now, I will state, I for me, the barrier was was Gregor. Right. Uh, Varshan yeah. was, was so logical because I was already doing and doing whispers because of um, the Bloodseekers uh, and uh, that area. But the Hell Tides were a huge problem. And we do know that in season three, our Hell Tides are going to be on the hour. And uh, I, I made mention of it the other day. Like when I run, when I, if I can time a run with a Hell Tide and I can just go around, it is awesome. But that was few and far between. Because you could right. never count on it, um, so th- that they've learned those lessons, and if that takes away just a little bit from the grind, I think that will be, that will be great. Um, so then we're only really left with th- season three, season three speculation, and this is where um, you know on on this Tuesday, we don't know when we're going to hear about the season. I would assume. Uh, at least a next week Thursday? before. Yeah. Next no. Thursday. We're going to hear yeah, next, next Thursday. Next Thursday. Or Friday. Um, yeah. It'll be the 22nd. Uh, no, I, I would imagine, you know, if I look at my calendar here, if by the 16th, right? The 16th is a week out. That's when they usually said, like, they want to do a campfire. Um, and so we should be getting those details then. This is where we get to be wrong. This is where we get to just be wildly speculative uh, in terms of what we think will happen um, and how this season is going to shake out. Uh, so I think there's one of us who's got uh, a keen eye for detail. Nineball, tell me what this season's going to be about. Uh, so this was actually a thought that I had at BlizzCon when it was first showed off, but the actual, like, the, the teaser image that they released for Season 3 with, like, little gobbledygook, and they have, like, kind of like the uh, the undead knight with the broken helmet and all that, and it's, like, it's got, like, chains across it, and, but then there's, like, this glowy thing in the background, which is, like, at least to me, is, like, 
Isn't that like one of the shadow portals in Zoltan Cool's archives? Because that looks a lot like a shadow portal from Zoltan Cool's archives. Uh, and yeah, it just, you know, I don't know. It like kind of like uh, hit me the other day. It's like, I've not seen anybody like talk about this or even like try to like speculate as to what's going on. So I just, you know, took a couple of screen caps, you know, from uh, Diablo 3 and such, just threw them together and be like, hey, you know, this is... This is the, the little portal thing in the, the background of the teaser image. Here's one of the the shadow portals uh, from Zoltan Cool's archives. And then, you know, even the, the gobbledygook uh, font, uh, while not like one for one, is, you know, kind of reminiscent of the uh, the little runes that's uh, up there on the, uh, the, the shadow portals and like the shadow locks and such that exist in there. You know, could be, maybe. Yeah, you know, possibly. It also it also would like push it like in a in a direction because um season one was kinda like focused a little bit on Kyovoshad and then season two was uh focused on the dry steps. This would be Zoltan Cool's archives are in Kedjistan, so yep. you know, they would it would push it into another zone that we you know, that they haven't kinda like focused on the, the story and one of the um one of the seasons yet you know so it just is like you know at the but at the same time could just be you know cool concept art and has absolutely nothing to do with what the seasonal theme is going to be i don't think we've had enough seasons to like really uh say you know that they're they're actually like teasing us with stuff and it could also still be something like completely new off the wall you know like with the season of the malignant you know because i think that they had a teaser image that had kind of like the uh the the technically wormy heart and it's like you you would never have been able to have guessed that because since that was all uh all brand new um you know so i don't know i just uh it was fun at least for me you know because like it's like that just instantly triggered uh the memories of these uh that one specific thing the uh, in from uh d3 if they create a waypoint in um where the act two town used to be in diablo 4 and that's where everything happens that would be really cool well and the desolate sands is already in diablo like there's a there's a lot of zone like coverage that would that would make sense with too i i mean i would be yeah. down for that for sure plus you know it's old and cool right he is a sorcerer yeah. after all so i i'm he's a little a, biased he's <laughs> a cool guy he yeah. is cool yeah. um do you think, think they would bring in do you think there's a possibility they'd bring in Kanai's cube already ooh that's a that's a question yeah there's the what was it there you know uh obviously after going through and posting that there's uh you know some people have been going through and throwing in some of like their own ideas and speculation and such and uh well i haven't seen anybody uh mention that i think uh you know a fellow content creator um tio he was going through like wouldn't it be cool like if you actually got to like if if we do go into the archives and when they kind of like resurrect you know zoltan cool again that maybe he can fill us in on some information on what happened to the Nephilim from Diablo three, you know, since, you know, you tying it into the, um, Kanai's cube, you know, Zoltan cool was helping us, you know, with how mm -hmm. to use it and activate it and such. Maybe um, he's the NPC that, that guides us. Cause we've always had an NPC kind of carry us through the seasonal theme. Right. So yeah. it'd be cool to have another ghost phase, you know, a Jedi, Jedi shadow of Zoltan cool <laughs> to follow us yeah. around and help us out. Or Bring back just, old Qui Gon. Right, or, or we could just have his head like Mimir from God of War. You know, just carry it with us. <laughs> um, and then yeah. he could be a back transmog too. That's true. He could mm. also be a new head at the Tree of Whispers. We could like trade him to the tree. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he would like that, but that would be fun. But then him and uh, what's his butt could hang out the. Oh my God, I forgot his Elias? name. Elias. Yes, Elias. Yeah. Um, why aren't we in? on creative meetings uh i feel like I, i'm saying right we've just, just hired us bro uh -huh. a lot of good ideas um the only thing <laughs> so what we what we've noticed is we had season of the malignant season of blood so if it is zoltan cool what's the one word season of cool <laughs> See, i was gonna cool say i was gonna season. say is it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be uh anakin's favorite because it'll be the season of sand there you go yeah it's yeah. everywhere um it's it's everywhere. 
Okay, I could see that season of sand. Um, I do hope eventually they do drop that uh, that naming scheme. Season of the malignant, season of blood. Like, make it go wild. Uh, it doesn't have to be limited. Maybe it's marketing. I don't know. Uh, all right, so season of sand. I like it. Um, let's see. Let's see how wrong we end up being in that. So outside of story, outside of Zoltan Cool, what do you guys want from season three that that when they do come to this campfire? Uh, and what we've noticed is it's not going to be just, hey, here's the mechanic, right? They're gonna I, here's my some of my predictions. They're gonna address Hoda Barbs and ball lightning sorks, right? Yeah. I think but wasn't I think, there an interview recently where they already touched on that yeah i off the top of my head i know i remember seeing it i just can't place it but yeah i, I think they have addressed that that it's it's not a permanent thing right but yeah. in tandem with that it because i don't think they're gonna they don't want to do what they did that one campfire chat where it's all nothing but nerfs right i think we're gonna hear some stuff about enhancements of like certain things becoming better through x y and z and i really hope that's minion and companion skills having played the necromance for a little bit they're not fun like when you have to get rid of that core mechanic for your for it to really shine that feels bad uh, when you have an entire skill wheel for druid that really doesn't do anything uh the minions just are they don't feel like minions that feels bad um i want to see that now maybe that's a season five thing maybe maybe that's a pipe dream right now because we did have in previous campfire people uh and i forget it might have been joe shelley saying like i didn't know that people wanted to play a zoomancer druid but we're gonna look into it people want that we, we want that um all three I, of you that's true um the the three of us that are willing to you know slag through that uh class quest every fucking time um because <laughs> oh, we hope that one day those wolves are going to do something cool um but i think that's that's my my greater prediction that and i think that's broad generalities right but the we're going to get something new and exciting for these classes that we've already grown to love and hopefully it pushes them into the into the areas that we that we hope for each respected class right that that they really do get to to shine like a necromancer reliant on minions seems so logical right yeah yeah because i mean like they're um obviously it you know scaling in the avatar of zero was uh something but i mean there there is like a a minion build uh that can do like uber lilith with ease obviously like you're it's very reliant on your gear rolls and such uh but it's like it's literally just like a lucky hit proc build is that the uh, ring of like, uh mandolin one yeah, the Ring of Mendelin, because yeah. before, like, a Bone Prison was bugged, and so it would instantly proc it, and that has been fixed. Uh, but it still is just, like, you know, spam uh, uh, the high lucky hit chance skill until it procs, and then you one-shot her, you know, because of the damage multipliers. But it doesn't, like, it doesn't feel like a minion build because you're doing zero damage until it procs, and then everything dies. You know, and so you're just literally just waiting for procs, and that that's it. Um, man, I don't know. I think that what I want the most out of Diablo 4, I'm not going to get this season, period. And that is, I want arena. <laughs> I want ah. 4v4, PvP, no PvE mobs, just four people fighting four people. Um... I want that so bad I can literally taste it. Um, I will settle for a fun leaderboard system that isn't infinitely scaling. Um, that doesn't... That allows, like, people that play... I'm not saying an hour a week, but, like, people that play, you know, 10 to 20 hours a week to compete with people that play, you know, way more than 16 hours a day. You know, like you were saying. Um, 
All right, I want. I think that the the thing that and and we've got to figure out how how they. I don't know how they could do it, right? I'm not a developer, so I don't know how it's possible. But like competitive games that are able to find that balance between the casual and the hardcore player and how it can impact the whole game, um, I think would be really good. I, I enjoyed the Great Rift system in Diablo 3, but it wasn't a perfect system and it definitely had a lot of flaws, especially from a, a fishing standpoint. So I don't want that to happen again. Um, and I don't like how much... You know, I like right now how open the game is because while there are clearly the top builds, there's still a lot of builds that are viable and can do Nightmare Sigil 100s and so on and so forth. Um so I'm just really anticipating, like, hopefully something really cool from that leaderboard standpoint. But I think more than anything, selfishly as a sorcerer, I know Ball Lightning is going to get fucked. Like, I know. I know it is. There's no way it's not. Um, just give us something, not necessarily the same level of powerful, but just give us something to fall back on that feels good. That's all I'm asking. Um, like Hydra. Yeah. I would play a Hydra build for sure. I enjoyed Hydra in, in the, the beta a lot. Um, there's some stuff that they could do to really make some other skills really, really impactful and cool. And Ball Lightning is a cool skill. I had a lot of fun playing it. But I know it's going to get nerfed into the ground. Um, I just hope that we're not, like, you know, at the bottom of the spectrum again, too. Continue to balance. Like, Adam Jackson talked about that, you know, how you want everything in this, like, range here. Anything that goes way up here, way down here, they want to bring it in line. Well, just, just keep us there, right? We, I know we're here right now. Just keep us there. I just don't want to be down here after it's done, right? And that's what I'm nervous about because, it, yeah, that's that's what I'm scared for. But I will be playing Sorcerer for sure no matter what, so we'll see how it goes. Do we want to take bets on what class is going to be the OP broken one next season? I think, uh, context. I good. think, yeah, that's that's actually a good, uh, let's, that's a good call. Let's, let's put it out there. So nobody really had Barbarian coming out of the woodworks for this season, right? Um, so who's it going to be that's broke? Uh, Rogue. Rogue. I feel like Rogue is always kind of up there. I'm going to yeah, go That's for why Swing. I think it, it's, it's up there, but no one's talking about it because there's yeah. so much other stuff that's broken. Right. So I Rogue. feel like Rogue's going to sneak in. I mean, that's my guess. My guess Rogue. is Rogue. I think Rogue's going to be the, the OP build next season. Yeah, it's like if they don't break something else because Rogue is always like the, the bronze winner, you know? And yeah. Like, they're they're always overshadowed by somebody else, but they're never bad. You yeah, know, they're they're still placing every time. But uh, I think it's gonna be Barb again. They can't figure out Barb, man. They've they've like ever since Whirlwind and Diablo two, they just can't figure that goddamn class there's, out. Yeah, <laughs> there's 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 a lot of things that need to change and get nerfed with the the barbarian because they just it's like, especially it's like one of the things because like obviously like. Like I I you know, I have a friend that played like a, a barb this season was going through and like one shotting world bosses and such, um. But like then you you put someone like Rob you know in control of a barb and then it just gets like ridiculous you know. Stupid, yeah. Um. So even even if you go through and you nerf like a lot of it like just the ability to line up uh the to be cognizant of always like where your buffs and stacks are at and such to be able to line up. Like, how many items do they have to nerf on the Barbarian to not make, like, you know, Hoda, like, super overpowered? And then, at the same time, like, not just the next skill in line also be, like, uh, you know, equally busted. I'd, Death blow. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I want to I say that uh, I would not be surprised to see a Barbarian uh, at the top again next season. Not Hoda, you know, but, yeah. like, something else. I don't think anything would surprise me. I just my bets on Rogue, but Barb's a fair bet too. Barb Barb's a fair bet too. With that, but you, so Xanth, what do you think? I'm gonna go Necromancer, right? Okay, I'll take it. It's their turn. I mean, it's their turn. Yeah, it, one, it it's their turn, and everybody was was like, "Season of Blood, this is gonna be it." And then, oh, it's a Hoda. It's a you know, I think. Well, I mean, from a Lilith standpoint, they're one shot Lilith, so worked yeah. out. Hey, yeah. Hey, good for them. Um. I think there's been a lot of good feedback around the Necromancer class this season so that we've seen the developers are really good about taking in that feedback and applying it. I could see a good course correction and somebody like a macro bio boy getting together with his spreadsheets and whipping up something that absolutely I was, I was gonna say fast. that that macro specifically has probably got his master's degree in diablo 4's necromancer at this point <laughs> with the dissertations i've watched that man put put together is it's nuts it is nuts 
yeah so i Good stuff. great content yeah uh, he's and uh solid dude we we need to bring him back again um so yeah i could i could see them fixing that now one thing we didn't bring up we know seasons are spread by teams right the season of blood was not created by the same team that did season one season one is returning now our season one team with this season is there any apprehension given the limited scope of season one going into season three no 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 i i feel like even if even if there's different teams working on different seasons like the lessons are learned throughout the building right um and i don't believe that season one being as bad as it was was because of the team i don't think anyone that is a fan of gaming or game development believes that um i believe that's a little further up the chain um for the reasons why some things were a little mediocre at launch and then also into season one. So um, I, I, I don't have any reservations at all. No, no reservations. Um, but I think it is worth noting, right? That I think season three is important for that team because yeah. even if season three isn't of the same quality of season two, a narrative is going to be formed immediately right that season one wasn't great season three is not living up to my hopes and i'm gonna wait to season four because well they did season two right and then all of a sudden it's every it's our odd seasons that end up being the bad ones right not that that is that not that that's a warranted thing but i i can see that narrative being formed by people who want to create narratives around Diablo 4. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's funny that you mentioned that because like my it I almost made it 24 hours on my speculation post before I got negative comments and like the first negative comment was oh don't worry the season is just going to be uh orange hell tide zones. Don't get too excited. It was just like okay dude, low effort, but okay. Um I think also, I think the, I'm o- cool the with only two different hell tides. <laughs> yeah, the the only thing that I have trepidation for with season three has absolutely nothing to do with the the team or the the design of the seasonal theme or anything like that. It's that metamorphosis is going away. I don't want to yeah. have to deal with crowd control again. Right? Which, yeah, you know, I'm not like, excited about that. <laughs> this, is, this has been the season of absolutely no crowd control. I was like, I don't care that the snakes have floaty eyeballs. You know, I don't care that there's cannibals like jumping on top of me it's uh, whatever it's fine it's cool i'm just having a lovely day um so i look forward to the boots of metamorphosis you know going through coming out (laughs) you know uh just like we had the uh the season one rings like i will i will gladly give permanently give up my boot slot to uh have a unique for permanent metamorphosis if for nothing else than just being permanently unstoppable it could just that could just be it. That's just like the unique effect is like there's no stats, no armor, you know, no intelligence, no cooldown reduction, no nothing. It's just it's just boots that say unstoppable. It's like cool. I'm glad you brought that up. I do think that metamorphosis feels like the way evade should feel in general, right? Yeah. Because yep. you evade something. I want, Make it baseline. Well, Make it make fun. I want my iframes, goddammit. What, I want my yeah, well, iframes. I that was exactly what I was gonna say. Is if I'm evading, I, I do a thing of Dark Souls, and you have an iframe, right? Um and you are almost rewarded for you know going with the boots that are giving plus three to evade. Like, okay, now I'm gonna have multiple opportunities. It doesn't mean you can't be killed. It doesn't mean that you couldn't get locked down. It just means you it was an extra layer to your gameplay. And I very much enjoyed it. I've hated having to go through and do the entire much. Uh, I'm going to hark back to my previous rant of having to go back and do a class quest frequently. When you kill a lot of hardcore characters, you do get to go back and redo that entire quest to get metamorphosis. But you know what? I did it every single time because that's how valuable it was it is so nice to have 
Um, um, yeah, that I think that's going to be the biggest loss of the season. The other vampire powers are cool, and they, they you can play around with them, but that was the mainstay. Like that was that was the best part. Yeah, agreed. Four went out for for metamorphosis. Um, but if if they are listening, and who knows Make if baseline. they are, just give everyone metamorphosis yeah. all the time. And you know, that'd I mean, be like you, could, you you can nerf it, like drop it down. To, you know, I guess yeah. technically, like not even nerf it because like the the primo play is to only have the rank one metamorphosis. Uh, yeah. You know, but like just have like a second. Of unstoppable yeah. on it or something, you know. That would be totally yeah. fine. Just, yeah. it was great. It was really great. Um, and yeah, uh, the, when you get chain feared uh, in day one of season three, and you don't have it. It's gonna suck. You're gonna be like, I should be. I should just be evading this, and I can't. <laughs> And I can't. I want my vampires back already? <laughs> yeah, I am gonna miss it. I will. I will say as we're you know kind of closing out on season three here, or season two. We're not. We're not on season three yet. Season two. I really enjoyed this season. Um, I did not expect yeah. to be sitting here in January, still playing. Right. Um, I've gone a little bit slower the past few days, but. Like Midwinter Blight was a great addition for that. Avatar of Zir, even though I'm not engaged with it, it's still there were good drops. And I hope season three has that. I hope season three has those things like maybe in the middle, right? And I, they'll be the leaderboards, but like bigger things, right? Bigger like global events for me to yeah. want to engage in uh, during that time. And if we're going and we go, uh, January, February, March, April. I'm I'm just trying to think of holidays that get worked in there. We talked about Valentine's Day, but yeah, I'm not super sure. Collecting hearts, man. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. We already had the season of the malignant. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I want these aren't malignant hearts. They're nice (laughs) hearts. Maybe you need to cure malignant hearts so that people can fall in love. I I don't know. Um, See. It writes itself it's like poetry. <laughs> yes. Shall I compare thee to a malignant heart? Um, see, that's Shakespeare, folks. Uh, you didn't expect that <laughs> on this podcast. You're like, ah, they're just talking about Diablo. And, nope, it's a sonnet. Um, I am back pentameter. Now I'm just going to toss out words. But I... To hark back to it, I, I very much enjoyed this season, and uh, if if season three is able to capture that, I I think it will be it'll be exciting because I I want to still be playing in April. I, I I shared on the last podcast, you know, like I installed uh, the new Path of Exile season. I played for two days, guys. I and then the next day I was back in Diablo Four, and that's not a slight against. Path of Exile, because I, I genuinely do love that game as well. It, I was just being pulled. I was being more pulled into Diablo 4. Um, I I want that from Season 3 as well, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm, I'm probably more looking forward to what they're going to say about itemization changes than even the season theme. <laughs> But the season theme is going to be big, and, and I'm really excited to see the future. I, again, we talked about a lot on the podcast over the last few months, but I think Diablo 4 is going to hit its true form in the next few months. I think we're going to start really, like, the game's already getting significantly improved as we move along, but I think that we're probably three to six months away from it being in, like, primo chef's kiss quality. So super excited, definitely enjoying it a lot more. Excited for season three, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I itemization we know will come together in season four or at least Mm -hmm. be touched on so this is our last one on our last season before we get that that ideal item rework right um i'm okay with that let's see what they do let's see what they cook up uh now before we close out i do want to point out our sponsors, PureDiablo.com, have an awesome little feature that you can...
purchase your Diablo goodies while also uh, giving us a small cut. Uh, they have a storefront on the Pure Diablo page. If you go there and you purchase any of the myriad of things that you see behind Nine Ball, um, like you can buy that goat plushie, uh, you can buy some of the other things. The goat one just stands out to me because I'm just like, I kind of need to buy it. Buy uh, Lilith. I'm, right. You can buy Lilith. Um, and that helps keep the site up and running. Um, over the past year and a half that we've been doing this, uh, you know, one of the comments has been around audio quality and stuff like that. Uh, it's always something that we're, we're working on, but we kind of need money to do it. Uh, so if you make those kind of purchases, it's a win-win. You get something and then it helps keep everybody going. Uh, if you can't do that, if you want to just leave a review, post a comment, uh, uh, like and subscribe. You're, you're supposed to say like, comment, and subscribe. No, I can't. I don't. It just feels unnatural. But I guess... Um, so we can just keep pumping out this uh, this quality content for you. Uh, head on over, buy your goat man, uh, leave a comment, and uh, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Uh, let's end that. Let's close it out as we always do with a moo, 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 moo. Like, comment, and subscribe. Moo. <laughs>